Can I see that phone? Yeah, absolutely. So here, I'll uh, should I should I un open it to the camera? Or something? Well, this is the box. Yeah. Should I be fancy freedom with phone? it? Yes. Should I be fancy yeah, with show it? Show the people Big the time. freedom phone. So, no, look it up. Look so it up. there you go. This is the freedom phone, guys. Yeah, it's And quiet. all that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful well, box. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm look. bumping my microphone here. So here we go. I'll. Uh, you probably your your frame is probably like at your chest. Okay. 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 So there we go. So this is it and all that. Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Perfect. Oh, that looks nice. There you go. Kind of still, it. it still darkens the camera because of the white. But yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So here we go. Um, here, I'll hand it to you in just a second and all that. But yeah, this is what it looks like. You know, it's a quality phone um, and all that. And then, oh, yeah. Perfect. It's a quality phone and, yeah. and all that. And you can boot it up. You know, we did. Uh, we, we basically combined some of the best um, custom ROMs uh, on Android Plus Plus. I hired a really great CTO um, to basically re rebuild. Um, Oh, you know, and uh, rebuild Android from the ground up, so that way you can, uh, so that way it's secure and all that. So we we mix Lineage OS, Graphene OS. Um, we took some of the best parts of all these things, and then you know it was tricky to do because that can that can <laughs> break a lot of things. Um, and we did that, and uh, and then yeah, so you have like Trust on there, which is a uh, 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 kind of a, a privacy guard for your phone, and then you boot, put it up, um, and then we have uh, uh, here. I'm just trying to think. One of the things we did is we made this really explicitly kind of. Uh, uh, political in a way because we thought about making like should we make this phone like a little bit more um, like a little bit more neutral um, in a way um, and not so like hard standing on uh, on on kind of free speech and and you know right wing politics um, and all that but we wanted to you know I feel like we did a good job we wanted it to have like a, I'm never afraid I guess of being provocative and I think a lot of people they don't they're they're I can hand this to you by the way if you want to play with it yeah. Um, Freedom phone. Yeah, freedom phone. How long did it take from Starts with DuckDuckGo on it? Ooh. Yeah, so DuckDuckGo is right on the home screen. <laughs> Brave Browser is the and default Fortnite? browser. Yeah, we preload Fortnite because we did that as a troll because uh, <laughs> Apple Apple banned Fortnite um, oh. off their app store. So again, they're they're not just uh, they're not just banning conservative apps. They're banning apps like Fortnite if they don't pay up, or wow. if like some governments, like for example, not that I use this app, but but Grinder. I mean, that's you know like Tinder for gay people. I mean, that's they banned that. They banned that not in the U.S. but a country asked them to be I oh, forgot which one but it was wow. like so the so they're responding to countries and all that and that's the problem with these huge huge multinational corporations is you know they they're, they're just in it for the money and all that and that's the whole purpose of 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 this phone and all that was uh, was was to make a phone that was a, tr a true alternative to the to Apple and Google do Apple and Google multiple Duopoly. sim slots yeah you got multiple sim slots and everything cool. um, and all that so how uh, long did it take from the drawing board to prototype and then from the prototype to, yeah. to finished product you can connect the connected to Wi-Fi too if you want to use the internet so that's like a test unit mm. so where's the camera use the camera so it's at the bottom right corner oh I so, see yeah, I see yeah, 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 exactly yep. exactly oh looks like a camera yeah yep. it zooms look at that hi so okay. I think uh, uh, I'm looking at the specs, and mm -hmm. I think the UmiDigi A9 Pro actually has a better camera. Uh, yeah, so we, we customized the camera uh, and everything. Like The problem is is we wanted to make sure that on the supply chain front that we got our parts in a secure way um, and all that. So that way, uh, like we, we just didn't feel satisfied with the UmiDigi, um, their camera Can supply chain. Oh, yeah, yeah, Thanks, yeah, man. absolutely. Oh, I see. Well, I, I Googled it. They say they have a 32 megapit, a 32 megapixel, megapit, megapixel, megapixel uh, uh, a camera. A lot actually of, has uh, uh, less, uh, uh, they have an octa-core processor, which I think yours is also. Yep, also we have an octa-core processor. Nice. But yours so. is 8 gigabytes, right? Um, 8 gig, 8, wait, Oh, one? no, no, no. Uh, this is great, man. 4 gigabytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. epic that one human can build, go and do something like this. Well, oh, thank it's, you. It's, I mean, not, obviously you have a team of 20 people. And factories yeah. and research and factories. Technology. How long did it take you guys from start to finish? It took a year. It took a year. So again, oh. this started out as a uh, as kind of, my background is crypto and all that. And we thought, well, would it, it'd be great to have a phone, you know, preloaded with a bunch of, you know, kind of blockchain-based apps and everything. Um, and, uh, uh, and we thought about that. But one of the reasons we wanted to call it a freedom phone was to have that provocativeness and to go right into the... Like, I, I think that there's a huge problem of people. A lot of people, you know, if, if they voted for Trump, they don't want they're scared to market to. Uh, uh, and, you know, I voted for Trump and 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 everything. They're scared to market to these uh, uh, scared to market to this to this audience. You know, you see, look, look, at there's like a pillow company, right? That's the least political thing ever. But if they they say they care about your values and they do, um, you know, they they end up 
they end up doing well but getting hated i know so many friends they have some of the best online alternative education uh, apps in the world that would appeal in my opinion to uh, uh, a lot of right-wing people that that care about alternative education because right now the the education system itself in my opinion it, it just teaches you know uh, crt and a lot of left-wing values and you know you could say you can have that argument but in my opinion there's no ideological diversity so that's another reason why i think i'm getting attacked so much is this i'm unapologetic free speech you know I'm unop and in my opinion you know uh, I'm a Republican so and I think that's the and it's weird because it flipped it used to be that Republicans back in the day in the George Bush era they were kind of a little bit you know not so good on free speech and it used to be the left and it's totally flipped now I'm like a one issue voter I just care about free speech yeah I think centralized education is a big problem it is good to build social cohesion through what we understand and know but I think the modern day education is teaching people how to learn mm -hmm. not what to know Exactly. And this education system seems to be shoving specific information into people's heads as opposed to teaching them how to think critically, which... Exactly. I mean, I dropped out of high school because I love to learn. Mm -hmm. Not and, and, that was, and that was the problem is, is uh, you know, you look at Richard Branson, he dropped out same age as me um, and all that is I, I love to learn. And that's why I had to leave because they I, I felt like if and that's one of the reasons why I care about free speech, because I was like, you know, I've done a TED talk. Um, I had met, you know, with with Jimmy Carter and, and all that, like Time Magazine wrote us. The media had liked me up until July 14th huh. when we launched this phone That's and so all that. Weird. And uh, like I, I had all these like literally I did an interview with um, Business Insider um, and all that before. They didn't know that I was launching the phone and it was very nice. Um, CNN had me on to talk about crypto a few days and they didn't know and they wrote these glowing things. Um, but uh, uh, about me. So I, I pulled up, I, I had the wrong specs before. I had the A9 Pro. On the A9, the specs look the same. Yeah. What's the difference between the Pro and the... I guess the Pro know. is a better camera. Mm -hmm. It's marginally more expensive. So, but but let's let's get down to brass tacks here. Mm -hmm. The specs look very, very much the same. Same camera, front and back. Uh, this display is, is the same. They say they have a dot, what is this, a dot drop display. Not the same as the, the what, what, what did your, what did your, what is, what does Freedom Phone have? Is it um Water drop. Is mm. that different? No, no. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, uh, is it different? I mean, they, they, I think that's their name for, for just it. I, again, I haven't looked at like the A9 specs really. So why is it more money? Why is it more money? Um, well, one, to, to, to so, so source all the, uh, the parts of this device, um, we, you know, it does cost more money to be able to get the parts we get from because if you don't want a supply chain reliant on, you know, let's say CCP companies or whatever, it ends up being a little bit more expensive, a little bit more pricey. Um, and also when you do things at scale, the, the overall product ends up being cheaper. So when people look up the price of these phones, uh, you know, a lot of these prices, it's for ordering, you know, 50,000 units at once. Or I because companies did and they can sell it because it's... Exactly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, or another company does it and then they yeah they resell it at that cost so they're the the root cause of these phones is they're selling 50,000 or 100,000 phones and then yeah they either resell um or or uh, you know that it counts as 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 buying 100,000 phones or something um or, or what what, they, what does the operating system do because 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 mm -hmm. look regardless of the reason why it costs you more money like mm -hmm. why should someone spend more money on a phone that has effectively the same specs as the, the A9. Well, yeah, I mean, the, at the operating system level, I mean, we, I mean, if you buy that, if you buy that phone, I guarantee it, it has a ton of Google stuff on, I mean, not just guarantee, you can look it up. Um, it has a ton of Google stuff on it. It uses the Google Play Store, which totally tracks you. And it's, uh, uh, the supply chain has not been verified. Um, and all that, and we're going to post on you know our whole supply chain process, which I think on on our website um, coming up. And then uh, we just we just got out there, and it was like a crazy launch. So you know we just <laughs> we we honestly did not expect <clears throat> to honestly have it kind of blow up this much. But it, but is, is right now is that mm -hmm. basically like the Freedom OS? Yeah, Freedom OS is a mix of uh, Lineage OS, AOSP, Android Open Source, Lineage OS, Graphene OS, couple other custom ROMs, and our own touch. And uh, uh, so one of the things we do on this phone is we silo every app in its own little digital island, its own little digital bubble. So that way it can't see anything that's going on the rest of the oh, phone. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. So Sandboxing. Uh, yeah, sandboxing. So, uh, uh, you know, like right now on, I, on iPhone, I think in even Apple developer analytics, just as a normal developer, you're able Can to... I see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have YouTube on that phone, do you? Uh, no, no. YouTube is... Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you have the option. You know, I guess. You know what annoys me? What? When I'll try, well, I'll be using the browser on mm -hmm. my phone and I'll go to Reddit and then it pulls up the app instead. Oh, that's and so it annoying. it keeps telling you to do it. And there's been periods where 
I've had to do, like, I've been out, right? So, mm -hmm. like, I'll, I'll record everything and then I'll leave. And then I'll get a notification from, like, someone will message me and be like, oh, hey, there was a, a typo in the in the, the thumbnail or something or a typo in the in the title. So I'll have to go in to the to the to make changes, but every time I go to the browser to try and log into the browser, it mm -hmm. pulls up the YouTube app, mm -hmm. and then not the actual like mm -hmm. studio. So I have to I had I have to actually delete the YouTube app mm -hmm. because the apps all connect to each other. Exactly. The browser should be independent from other apps. If I'm in the browser and I need to pull up a site for a specific reason, and I, I can't remember mm -hmm. the specific reason, but I th I think it's because um. The YouTube Studio app mm -hmm. doesn't actually allow you to affect, I think, monetization. Mm. You have to go into the browser to do it. Mm -hmm. But then the browser default pulls up the YouTube app, not even mm -hmm. the Studio app. And then I can't go in. Mm -hmm. So I delete YouTube from my phone, oh. log in, fix it, then reinstall You YouTube. might be able to fix that in settings and have it so it doesn't auto default to the app. Yeah. I, I, ultimately, that's what I oh, good. ended up doing. Yeah. Something like that. Like, don't switch. Are mm -hmm. there... Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Um, are there? Have you guys looked into setting up anything that allows you to mine cryptocurrency on your phone while it's active? The problem with that is, uh, I mean, we could, you know, give you the option to do that, but your phone is, uh, it, it doesn't have, it, this phone has a great processor, but for literal like Bitcoin mining, that takes like a huge amount of processing could power. Could you tap into a mesh network and be part of a, a group of nodes it, that we're mining i don't think the money would end up being worth it for you so yeah you could but i don't think it'd be worth it for you 500 bucks is steep man 4.99 um yeah i mean uh, you know we give coupon codes 50 bucks off and you people can pay monthly if they want to um and all that but uh but yeah i mean to me i mean you know you see the phone feels as good i mean you have a thousand dollar iphones even 1300 dollar iphones we didn't want to like cheap out on uh, in my opinion the quality you know i'm, I'm thinking about it because i'm like I understand, you know, some of the arguments people make. They're like, dude, the A9 is cheap. And I'm like, if I wanted to buy the phone right now and I wanted to get someone without them having to worry about it, I want to get them a phone that's not being tracked, mm -hmm. that's got these, these, these apps that have been censored they can get access to. That's going to be hard for me to do. Like, like, I'm thinking, you know, what if I were to just buy a, a hundred of these A9s mm -hmm. and then just go through them and then load up a new operating system? There, there'd have to be so much stuff you'd have to do to make sure it works and quality control. I probably won't be able to do that. I got to be honest, I think 500 bucks sound, sounds steep, but I stand by what I was saying earlier that if, if, if your device does what it says it does and you're providing a service effectively, hardware mm -hmm. be damned. If it's a service that provides people with instant access to a clean operating system mm -hmm. that doesn't track them and, and provides them a way around censorship, mm -hmm. that's seriously, that's, 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 it's massive. Also, you're not using slave labor, right? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's another thing is just yeah I mean to me I feel like the real story of this is that you know what like Apple like I always thought it'd be great if um if if some president had put sanctions on on the import of any goods made by slave labor because that would just shut down a lot of these big phone companies and and hold everything up because it's bad yeah but then the American people would be like why does my phone cost ten grand <laughs> I mean you know I think well. Trust me, we, we make this phone what isn't it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to cost that much if if you're not using using that kind of labor and all that. I oh mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hong Kong is is got problems right now, but I don't uh, Yeah. They're not it, well actually I don't I don't know for sure. Foxconn's not in Hong Kong. They're in uh, They're in Taiwan. They're in Taiwan. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have they have they have stuff from Still all bad. Of, I mean, exactly. Wait, Foxconn is in Taiwan? I believe they're a Taiwanese company. Fact fact check me. So, New York Times fact check me right now. Eric. Yeah. Isn't an iPhone like a thousand dollars? Yeah, exactly. An iPhone is like Shenzhen. a thousand. I thought it was. Oh, Shenzhen. okay, you're right, Shenzhen. Yeah, yeah okay, that's great. where all the people are committing suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad because I was mess. like, I was like, I like Taiwan, you know, and all that. Yeah, and I was I, like, I think, no. Like, yeah, I okay, thought it was good. Shenzhen. Yeah, New York Times fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with the phone at the operating system level, yeah, it's completely de-Googled. You know, it has its own app store and all that. So you're not relying on the Google Play Store or anything. And uh, and we, you know, like, you know, trying to sideload apps or all that for, I mean, the thing about this phone is a lot of just normal people that aren't, aren't like, yeah, trying to jailbreak their phones, root their right. phones and all that got that. And then, yeah, I mean, that's, that's. It's just a huge problem that we're reliant on, in my opinion, anti-free speech hardware. I mean, it's ironic to me that Apple's motto used to be think different, and now huh. they ban apps who think different. Um, yep. And uh, uh, so, I mean, it's, or Google, which was do no evil, and then now there's company policy. They got rid of that motto and all that. And that's and that's why I think, you know, like, uh, you know, we're a startup, but ultimately, and uh, and I, I, I don't have like a PR team of like a thousand people like these people, like I'm just, you know, coming on this podcast, you know, um, uh, you know, just trying to share the word. Um, but I mean, it's, 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 it's just, if we don't have our own hardware, in my opinion, we're screwed.
It's the weirdest thing that people were like, it's a thing, saying it's a honeypot. Like buying yeah. the phone is a trap. I'm like, what do you think your phone already does yeah, out of the it's box? It's exactly. a honeypot. Welcome to modern technology. Right. Well, they wouldn't, phones are honeypots. They wouldn't attack me this much if it was. And then two, yeah, I mean, they've doxed my... Unless... They're trying to convince everyone you're on the level by attacking you, saying, see, look, they're attacking him. That must prove it. The double-double so, double so cross. The double-double double yes, cross. Yes, the false flag, false flag, false flag. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, they, because of these articles and because of Will Summers' article, my mom got doxxed and all that, Whoa. and they're releasing— That is a coordinated harassment campaign from Will Summer. In, in my opinion. And, uh, uh, and I mean— and, and it's just, I mean, luckily my mom's Scottish, so she's tough. Um, she, she was tough growing up um, in, in the best way possible. Um, and uh, uh, and they've talked to my mom because my mom, she worked on the, I mean, she's an incredibly smart woman and, and, and a great mother. Uh, she uh, uh, she worked on the, um, uh, the Star Wars project under Reagan. Um, and all that and then yeah, so they're trying to say like I'm this honeypot and all that just because my mom You know worked 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 on a project under the Reagan administration and all that and uh, I mean it's it's crazy Honestly that that my mom has gone to I mean coming to the political world. I almost like uh, I I mean I knew what was coming in the sense of of you know, but I was so well liked by the left-wing media, you know, I was doing interviews with them and all that and I was fine I wanted to give it up because uh, for free speech and all that. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it, it's actually true. Um, and uh, uh, but to me, to see like, yeah, my mom get doxxed. You know, these people write fake articles, um, and uh, for people that hadn't even touched the phone yet. I mean, it's it's amazing when I think about how we got to this point. You know, yeah, I was talking about I'm still shell shocked, honestly. Like, but you, you know, I was, I was talking about algorithmic uh, uh, psychosis, mm -hmm. and I want I'm thinking about it from like their the perspective of the psychopaths mm -hmm. and who live in the in the mirror world in the in the in the in the upside down or whatever. And you know how did how did we come to this position of knowing computers of no like how, look we knew about Bitcoin in the early days. Most people didn't even find out about Bitcoin until like 2016 or something. And I'm like I was on the internet as long as I can remember. My family had CompuServe on DOS, mm -hmm. you know. And then so then we got Windows 3.1. We had AOL. I've always had access to the internet to learn and read whatever I wanted. And I guess that makes uh, uh, that makes you a deviant because you have access to the summation of human knowledge or so so much knowledge at the time. Regular people, other millennials, didn't get the internet until they were teenagers. So they didn't necessarily grow up with it as heavily. Like I was programming stuff. I was doing video games. I was, I was doing flash animations and flash websites when I was like 12 or 13. That's amazing. Yeah, I built my first computer when I was like seven. So here I am with all the access to this information, totally independent. These other people don't. And I think that that might be where this like hard bifurcation starts. Mm -hmm. The people who are internet savvy, who understand the rules of the internet, don't argue with trolls. It means they win. But then you get these other kids who aren't internet savvy and they're just watching nothing but this horror content. And so they become insane and we become discerning. Mm -hmm. And then you it's get tough a clash. to say because me and Eric are both, we're like almost different generations. I'm 42, you're 22. 22 yeah, wow, so 20 like, years apart. That's crazy. We're both internet dudes. Like, I didn't get internet until I was 16, mm -hmm. AOL, but I'm so still. What year like, was that? 1994. Six or four or five or something, 1994, I think. What year were you born? 79. 79. 79. Yeah, so right, right around there. You look like a product of the 70s. Yeah, I feel like, man. <laughs> Just barely. But it's the critical thinking skills. And I don't know if it matters when you were born if you're going to have critical thinking skills. Realizing what you see isn't necessarily... Like, if you see something a thousand times, that doesn't mean that it happened a thousand times. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. What do you... I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just think that there's two... Um, different universes that exist. Yeah, it seems like There are that. people who live in the paranoid... You know, it's really funny. Uh, there's this very, very high-profile podcaster who apparently um, said that I was one of these people who lit, who's too, too online and, uh, you know, like, oh, there's these, these people, they're just too online and they live in this world. And I'm like, the people on the left who believe in all of this algorithmic psychosis and are completely unaware of it, they're the people who are too online. Mm -hmm. The people who believe that Donald Trump was a Russian agent, mm -hmm. that's because of the two online people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid that it's their lack of critical thinking skills. And if they just watched a lot of like violent action movies, they'd, they'd think that that was normal too. They're, they've, they, they've been... How do, you, how do you tell someone who's spent 15 years of their 25-year life that everything they've seen and experienced on social media as they were growing up and learned was wrong? You encourage them to take psilocybin. Here's, here's an example. The only way. <laughs> Imagine you're in an aircraft hangar. Massive. We're talking like 50, 80,000 square feet. This massive aircraft hangar. 
And we're all looking around at stuff, constantly walking over and asking, what's that? Ooh, that's interesting. And these people are in the corner, staring at this, the, the corner of the room, pointing, thinking that's reality. It's almost like the allegory of the, uh, of the, the shadows in the cave. Yeah, the cave, yeah. 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 That they've been sitting in this cave, seeing nothing but police brutality shadow puppets. And so when you're at the door of the cave yelling, that's not real life. Mm-hmm. They're like, you're crazy. These people are conspiracy theorists. It's a rabbit hole. You know, it's like, what, what, I can't remember the exact quote from Breitbart about walking towards the fire. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, people think, I can't remember the exact quote, but someone said to me something similar, so it might not be Breitbart, that people are scared to walk towards the fire because they think they'll get burned, but on the other side is freedom. And, you know, you, you walk past it and then everything's normal and you're fine. Mm-hmm. These people are trapped in the cave, man. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the shadows on the wall, it is real life. It's just one tiny fragment of real life. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. So they're living in this paranoid, delusional state. They, they, they look, look at what they say when they're like, when they say, when they say things like police are hunting black people. Jeez. You, we know that's not real. But imagine you're 18 mm-hmm. and you were eight years old. And you had no, no life experience. You were playing hopscotch. Mm-hmm. A few years later, you get on Facebook for the first time. And what do you see? Remember that book we had with um, Azra? Uh, oh, no. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The CRT book. You it was the do. book where the little kid was like seeing a video on the internet, like eight-year-old kid. And then, and then saying like, mommy, what's this? And the mom's like, no, don't watch this. And then the little girl finally snaps one day like, I know the truth about what the police are doing. It's because people realize you'll make money off of police brutality videos. Hmm. Oh, I think I figured out how to get through to these people or maybe something that can help is my mom. I used to play video games a lot. My mom would be like, it's not real. This isn't real. This isn't. And, but what she didn't realize is if she just told me this is real, but there's more. Look, these are also things that are real. So acknowledge that what I was doing is real. Like if I'm playing a video game and it's a character and a story in my mind, that is reality. It's just a, a fragment of this greater reality. So if you acknowledge like critical race, all these theories and things. Yeah, they are real. They're, they are valid concepts, but there's more. There's a, there's a meme where it's like there's this guy playing video games. And then his dad walks in and he goes, hey, do you want to play this cool new game? Basically, you have to go on adventures. You try and raise money to buy certain to, to buy artifacts and items to improve your character's stats, become better equipped, stronger and faster. You make friends. And then and he's like, yeah, you make friends along the way. And the dude's like, wow, sounds awesome. And then he shoves him out the door and he's like, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's life, dude. It's funny. Life imitates art and all that stuff, you know. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.